Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. It is Wednesday. You know what that means. That means we bring back the one and only Anna Kelly. Hi, Anna. Hi, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. you. How are you? I'm doing great. You got the whole family back. Your oldest son is home. I do. It's so nice to have all my little kitties under my roof. Oh, that is, <laughs> that, that brings is awesome. me joy. Better than any present I could get. Just having them all here. That is awesome. Ours is home as well. So yes, lots of joy, lots of happiness. Uh, just good times had by all. So this this is this is a good time at the Zuber household. Good, good. It's good to en- enjoy each other and just have a little bit of downtime, right? Absolutely. So hey, one of the things I want to read you is a question, a new, you know, a question I got today that I get flavors of weekly that I'm sure you get as well. So let me just read it. It's a little bit long, uh, but I think it's, um, I think it'll tee up a good conversation. Ready? I'm ready. All right. So uh, real estate investing has been a dream of mine since I can remember. I got pulled in the rat race of life early, married at 20 with kids, keeping up with the Joneses, et cetera. I have since sold my truck, tractor, project truck, and have no debt now except my house that we both love and wish to stay in forever. More because of the property than the house. I want to get in the game ASAP, but don't want to ride out, ride out an alligator. I have about $10,000 in cash in my area of Montana, or maybe that's Missouri, M-O, I'm going to guess that's Missouri. Yes. Uh, That won't get much outside of being a slumlord. I owe about $190 on my current home that is valued at $350. My question, should I continue to hold and save looking for a deal in a less than favorable area, or should I take a cash out refi and buy something better sooner to get started? I'll just leave it there. What do you think? You know, there's, she's got options and she doesn't feel like she does, which is mm-hmm. the kind of the desperation of the email, right? It's like, yep. what do I do? I don't have very much cash. How do I get started? And mm-hmm. if she wanted to stay in her house, which it sounds like she does, mm-hmm. then I'm not going to say go house hack. I just mm-hmm. want her to create some kind of extra income on top of the you know, kind of doing the same thing you would in a house hack, Mm -hmm. let your income coming in pay for your mortgage. So in today's interest rate environment, and again, there's a lot of caveats. So it's kind of hard to do these without digging deeper, right? Right. But in today's interest rate environment, where you can still get a primary home mortgage for, you know, three and a half percent or less, as long as she's good with her money, Mm -hmm. and she will actually use the equity to buy more property, I would say absolutely. Okay. Take a home equity loan. Okay. Um, either you keep your mortgage. If it's below 3%, maybe it makes sense to keep the mortgage and put a second on it for the difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, or just refi the whole thing and cash out. I would say in this market, and again, I don't know Missouri well, right? Yeah. So I don't know if the prices have gone up crazy, what the supply and the demand is. But to be what a lot of people would be considered safe, I would mm-hmm. say go up to 80% LTV. That's mm-hmm. really safe on a second mortgage mm-hmm. or on a on your primary. When rates are low, mm-hmm. lock it in for 30 years. And if I did the numbers really quickly in my head correctly, I think she could take out 80 or $90,000 mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. use that as a down payment on a property. Mm-hmm. In most markets, I could at least buy her four to six units yep. as a down payment to create some cash flow. Then okay. she can stay in her house have some extra money coming in for cash flow. Um, you're an advocate of singles. I am too in certain markets, yeah. but I would say whatever's nearby to her that she thinks she can handle first time landlord, buy a couple singles or maybe see if she can find a fourplex or a mm. fiveplex and buy that and start creating some extra cash flow. And she's also hedging inflation. Yeah. So she's taken the money out of her home where it's being eaten away by inflation and basically devalued, and she's putting it to work to beat inflation, make money on the spread between inflation and the interest rate of the loan, and create cash flow. So yeah. that's the advice I would give her, assuming you know everything else is stable and she's buying in an area that's stable. That's yeah. key too. I don't want you taking your equity and buying in a class C minus D area. Yeah. You need to invest in an area that has population growth. It has good employers, not just one employer like GM and you know Detroit years ago. Mm-hmm. Lots mm-hmm. of employers, population growth, great schools and low crime. 
And if you can target a property in that area, you'll do really well for a long time. And I feel that's a safe investment to use your equity for. Yeah. So there's a couple of things. Um, I get this question so often. I always go back to, I always start with what is the yield in your market? And, and they never know, right? They're right. A lot of people, you know, don't have a lot of savings. I think this one was 10,000 bucks. And they're like, hey, I've got this piggy bank over here. I guess I should use that. And I'm like, God, no, stop, stop. You've got to do the work. You got to pick your market. You got to get a buy box until yeah. you can tell me buy box in Missouri is 8%. And I've looked at 112 listings over 90 days. I don't want you doing anything, right? right. I, do, I don't want you. It is very easy. In this example, a $350,000 loan taking out 80%, she could, she could probably walk away with almost $100,000. If you are not doing the work ahead of time, that $100,000 for most people, in my opinion, will be wasted. Because if you don't do the work up front, you won't do the work when you have the money. And then you are nothing better than a Las Vegas gambler. I agree with you 100%. And that's something you teach a lot about, oh, right? So yes. yes, I assumed that she, you know, she'd have some level of knowledge of that, but if she doesn't yet, absolutely. Yeah. Because one of the biggest mistakes people make, and I don't care if it's real estate, the stock market, currencies, crypto, is in investing in what you don't understand. Yeah. That's the biggest problem. So if you're going to invest in a property, yes, you absolutely, I, I'm not saying go to the MLS, pick something that looks yeah. pretty into it, right? Hey, it's a fourplex. <laughs> On this, it buy a fourplex. I'm going to buy it. No, not that, that way. You no. know, know your market, know the, the, the risk and reward for that property too. You know, how much time are you going to have to put into it for the, for the return on your money that you're going to make? Um, you know, usually starting close to home works for a lot of people, unless you're in a market that doesn't. But you have to know that you have to have done the research, like you said. And once you've done the research, you know what your return needs to be. You know that you can get the loan on the new property. You know what the debt coverage ratio would be. Mm -hmm. Then you start looking for properties. And then when you yeah. see a good deal, you'll know it because you've yeah. looked at all the ones that aren't so great. You've looked at average and you'll know what's a good deal. Yeah. So the first point about me, because I get these questions so often, is do not, do not, do not be in a rush to take out your hundred grand. You haven't done enough work. And I know people well enough that if the hundred grand is sitting in your account, one of two things will happen. One is you will buy a bad deal because you're lazy. Yeah. Two, you will do the work, not find a deal. And then the hundred grand will burn a hole in your pocket. and You will buy something stupid. Right. All bad outcomes. So yeah. I propose doing the work, spending them 60 or 90 days. And then if you can articulate to someone that, hey, I, this is a great deal in my market. My average is six. I found an eleven. Then and only then can you go back to a bank and, and think about taking out the money. But my order is very different because I have, see, I have seen too many people use their house as a piggy bank, then are lazy because they don't appreciate, they don't appreciate the money. It was too easy. They didn't really work for it, right? The appreciation happened. And usually you, you make bad choices. You got to do the work first. And then the second thing in this particular thing that concerned me a little bit, Again, it sounds like they sold off stuff. They sold off a new, tr I sold my new truck, tractor and project truck. So he sold three things and they only got 10 grand in cash. The boat's leaky somewhere. Right. That's another problem, right? If you're going to add, you're going to go get a bunch of debt. Then you're going to go buy a rental property. And then you've only got 10 grand after selling three things. Uh, where, where's the emergency fund? You're, you're basically in a leaky boat that might be propped up by your hundred grand from your house, but you got other problems. You need to go evaluate needs versus wants. Um, you need to be able to prove that you can save 400 or 500 bucks a month already. So, something, in my opinion, again, I know nothing other than 312 words, but it sounds right. to me like the boat's leaky somewhere. And until you get that fixed, don't buy a rental property. Yeah, that that's super important. And and that kind of goes back to and, and and we've talked about where we agree with Dave Ramsey and where we don't, right? Where where our opinions diverge. But for people that are not living below their means and you've got a lot of credit card debt and oh, you've yeah. got expenses that are more than what you're bringing in, you cannot go buy something else even if it expands your means if you don't have the discipline to understand how do you make sure that you stop the overspending? Because you'll overspend on a rental property just like you do on your home. So getting control of your living expenses, figuring out, and it sounds like maybe they've done some of that for them to go sell everything. Yeah. 
maybe they did all of that. And so if you've, if you've figured that out, great. If you haven't, go back and say, what can I live on if I don't touch this home equity loan? Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I reduce my living expenses to that for now to prepare me to be able to expand my means? And then what, um, what emergency fund will I have? And that's really important. You know, minimum, you should have three months in three months expenses to six months expenses. That's yeah, minimum, yeah, right? Yeah, because that 10 grand on a, is probably, again, I don't know Missouri from, from Adam at all, but that's probably a family's emergency fund. Right. All right. Well, that's untouchable anyway. So that really doesn't exist. What do you got right. for the real estate emergency fund? Right. You should definitely not touch that. So, but I, I say once you have the wherewithal to honestly self-assess and say, okay, I've gotten control of my finances. I understand that I can't go use this money for anything else. And you commit that you're not using it for anything else. Mm -hmm. The one place that I would diverge with you just a little bit, but sure. only because I've done it and I yeah. knew I had the discipline to do it. Yep. If you don't have the discipline, don't touch your equity because you could you could lose your home, right? Yeah, you can. So uh, if you though can say, I'm going to have the discipline that I'm going to take the equity loan and I'm not going to touch it till I find the right property, and you can you have the money to keep paying that extra mortgage payment. I am still recommending, I have a couple of students that I've done this and I'm doing this myself, yeah. getting the equity loan now while rates are super low before they get raised, because they will raise. Oh, absolutely. So if you're serious about real estate investing, you're serious that you are only going to take it for the next property. You're going to do all the work to be laser focused to find the right deal. And you're not going to touch the money until you find the right deal and you know that you know is a good deal, then I say, go ahead and do it and lock in the rates while they're low. But you have to have that discipline because if you take it out and you end up finding a boat or you say, you know, we really do need another car. Let's mm. go ahead and do another car with a little bit of it. Rehab our house with a little. We always we'll wanted an RV. We could buy an RV now. And I've seen people do that with the plan <laughs> by real estate say, well, now let's go buy a better car and we redo our house and we'll get more equity and we then deserve it. Yeah. find something, a, a real estate rental property that's cheaper, that brings in less cash. Yeah. It'd be better to get the big, most expensive one you can with still leaving a little in reserve for emergency funds on the property, right? Mm -hmm. That extra cash flow, then use the cash flow to go get a car payment or whatever else you need to do. Yeah. And again, I totally agree with you. I've actually done that myself, but I've obviously proven to have the discipline not to right. touch it. They exist in different accounts. I have just seen too many people extract equity from their home with intentions of real estate investing in either A, they buy too fast. They're, they're lazy. They don't want to do the work. The money, bur the money burns a hole in their pocket or B, they are doing the work and then the boat, the car, the this, the that, the other yeah. thing. So Right. These are all fun conversations. We get it all the time. So Anna, how can people find you and get part of your world? Great. You can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram, Anna Kelly Investing or Anna Kelly REI Mom. And my website is reimom.com. Awesome. Thanks, Anna. Thank you. Mm -hmm.